Before you fire it up, you'll have to learn some things about this machine so you don't hurt yourself or any fellow workers. Suits me. Up till now, I've operated wheeled machines. I want to be able to operate this baby properly and safely. Okay, I'll get you started. By the way, you're dressed right, clothes fit properly, hard hat, safety shoes, and safety glasses. Loose-fitting stuff is dangerous. Could snag on something. Get on and off the machine properly. Grab the handrail and be careful of grease or mud so you don't slip. In winter, be careful of ice or snow. Now, reach into that box there and get the operator's manual. Yeah, here it is. You'll have to really study the manual to be a safe and efficient operator. The first thing, get the seat adjusted right for you and fasten the seat belt. Refer to the operator's manual to learn the various instruments, as well as to learn what each control does, steering, stopping, dozing, loading, or dumping. After 10 hours of operation, or before startup each morning, there are important checks to make. Check the fuel sediment bowl for water. If there is water, check the operator's manual on how to service the fuel system. Then check the coolant level, and be sure there's no dirt or debris in the radiator fins. Whether equipped with a bucket or blade, lube all equipment pivot points, as indicated in the operator's manual. This keeps grease in and dirt out, which extends the life of the machine. Give a quick check of the track tension. If there's too much slop, excessive wear occurs. The operator's manual explains how to tighten the tracks. It's very easy to do. Next, be sure there's enough engine oil. Then clean the air cleaner dust cup, which is right in the same area of the machine. If there's a rubber evacuator, squeeze it to be sure it dumps out the dirt. The transmission oil level should be checked, as well as the level of hydraulic oil. As you're moving around the crawler for various checks, look for any leaks. And finally, you want to be sure the fuel tank is topped off. And remember, no smoking material or flames when you're fueling. Always, when starting up in the morning or on a new shift, be sure that the manual, parking, or hydraulic brakes will each hold the machine by themselves. If you're not sure about how to check the braking function, it's all in the operator's manual. To start up, put the transmission in neutral and apply the parking brake. Shift to low range with the engine off. Then, before starting the engine, make sure everyone is away from the machine. Okay, start her up. Now I suppose I should check some of these gauges. Let's see, engine oil pressure, transmission oil pressure, and yeah, whether the air cleaner is restricted or not. Let's see now, these are the hydraulic brake pedals, and these two levers are the track speed controls. This one is for the direction of travel. Okay. Check the blade control. Move it up, now down. Raise it a little. Good. Now let's see you try that out. Go straight forward. Uh, give yourself a little more engine speed. That's better. Take it easy at first. You turn by giving one set of tracks more speed than the other. This keeps full power applied to the tracks while turning. For tight turns, apply the right brake and you turn right. Now turn left by applying the left brake. Great. If your machine is equipped with a blade which will angle or tilt, there are separate levers for these functions. Well, let's see you try some dozing. Put the transmission in low track speeds for working. Throttle up the engine and gradually drop your blade. Don't go too deep or you'll stall out. 
The idea is to get the material to roll or move ahead of the blade. Now you got the idea. That looks pretty good. Be extra careful when you're working near a bank, cliff, or a bench in a quarry. The overhang could give way and you'd tumble to serious injury or death. Usually you'll doze down the slope whenever possible. It's easier to keep the material moving. Gravity is helping you. When you've moved a load, look around to see that nothing's in the way. Back up the slope and doze another load down the slope. If you want to smooth out piles of material, first spread it by going forward, feathering the material ahead of and under the blade. You can back drag to get a smoother surface. Put the blade on the ground, put the machine in reverse, and the control forward in float position. Always look behind you before going in reverse. When going down a steep incline, have the dozer in low range and use the manual brakes as that will keep the transmission in gear for additional engine retarding effect. Yeah, this is a little different situation when the crawler is a loader model. Let's see here. Got to be a different setup for the control levers. Could be, depending on how the machine is equipped. That's why it's important to read the operator's manual for each machine. One lever controls bucket and lift arm functions. Grab hold of the lever. That's it. Okay, now. Your bucket is on the ground. To raise the loader lift arms, Pull the lever back. To lower, push it forward. All the way forward is in float position. The same lever controls the bucket. When you want to dump, move it to the right. All the way to the right is fast dump. Move it to the left for rollback. Say that's all right. One lever for all those movements. And there's one more position return to dig, which is forward and to the left, sort of a diagonal move. That will automatically roll the bucket back to level and lower the arms until the bucket is on the ground. Let's see how you do with a loading cycle. Go into the bank with the bucket level and crowd right into the material. Then raise the lift arms and still crowding forward to fill the bucket, roll the bucket back. Reverse and power turn, carrying the load low until you approach the truck. Then raise the arms. Move up and dump. When you brake, it activates the clutch cutout. Always load over the truck or haul unit from the driver's side, so you know where the driver is. The best technique is to load the front of the truck first, then the rear the material will dump out of the truck easier. Never carry a load over a worker's head. At the end of the shift, you have to park and shut down properly. Park on a level spot. If there's no level spot, park parallel to the slope. Keep the crawler out of any traffic patterns. Then lower the bucket or blade, put the transmission control in neutral, and engage the parking brake. Run the engine at idle for about two minutes. Then, pull out the fuel shutoff control. When the engine stops, turn the master disconnect key to off. Remove the key, then push the fuel shutoff control in. In freezing weather, clean the tracks and park on a hard surface or up on boards. This prevents a freeze down, which could damage the transmission or final drive when you try to break loose. Special optional safety equipment may be required for a particular application of your machine. These items might be a rotating beacon, backup alarm, extra counterweights, heavy-duty side screens, or a spark arrester. Your case dealer will work with you in ordering such optional equipment. The points we've covered so far, plus careful study of your operator's manual, will help you become a valuable and safety-conscious operator. With safety, 
everybody wins. Your company, your fellow workers, and you. The rest of this film on the case crawler is for those of you responsible for the service and maintenance of the machine. There are two very good reasons for proper service and maintenance. To protect the owner's large investment and to keep the machine in safe operating condition. Whether you're working on the machine, on location, or in the shop, lower the bucket, engage the brake, and put a do not operate tag on the instrument panel. Remove the key before starting any service work. This will keep some person from firing up the machine and running over you. If you need to work with the bucket up, you must use and properly secure the support strut provided. With a new machine, after the first 20 hours of operation, it's a good idea to tighten the track shoe bolts to about 200 foot-pounds. While you're at it, check the track tension and look for any loose or broken pads. The operator's manual details how to adjust track tension. Also after the first 20 hours, have the dealer perform the after delivery check. At the same time, let the dealer know about any problems you may have. The 10 hour maintenance steps have been covered in the operator portion of this film, except for the following, which should be done by the service mechanic. To ensure safe operation of the machine, check all control linkage for need of repair or adjustment. Eyeball the undercarriage. Look for leaking rollers, undue wear of pins, bushings, or sprockets, and of course, any parts which are broken or missing. Certain servicing is done at regular hour intervals, which may come up every week or two. The operator's manual tells you when. One service point is to change the engine oil. You'll need a container which will hold the oil and it's best to drain the engine hot. More dirt comes out because it's still suspended in the hot oil. Always have the safety strut in place when the bucket and arms have to be up out of the way for service work. Check the schedule for when to remove the oil filter and install a new one. Apply a thin layer of oil to the gasket and turn by hand until the gasket touches then turn a half turn more. Don't use a wrench. You can damage the new filter. Put the drain plug back. Put in fresh oil. Run at a thousand RPM for a couple of minutes and again check the oil level and for leaks. Also on a regularly scheduled basis it's time to check the oil level in each final drive. This is the oil level plug. And if the oil is up to operating temperature, there can be pressure, so be careful and open the plug slowly to bleed off any pressure. Add more oil if necessary. There are two hydraulic brake systems, one for each set of tracks. The brake fluid level also needs to be checked regularly. First, remove the left floor plate. Then be sure the fluid level in the master cylinder is a half inch below the top of the reservoir. Before adding any fluids, check the operator's manual for the proper fluid to use. The wrong brake fluid could cause a machine malfunction. After removing the floor plates, you can get at the brake pedal pivots. Give each one a shot of grease. If there are enough hours on the machine, according to the operator's manual, now is the time to lube the U-joints. Next, check the drive belt tension. Total deflection should be a half inch. If substantially more or less, make the proper adjustment as described in the operator's manual. Check the battery fluid level at 125 hours, more often in hot weather. Remember, batteries contain sulfuric acid, which can cause severe burns to the skin or eyes. Also, batteries produce explosive gases, so no smoking, sparks, or flames. If the fluid is low, add distilled or at least clean water. Do not fill above the split rings. Now we move on to the service steps required at 250 hours. This could be every month or month and a half, depending on the severity of the job. These include certain spots to be greased, 
changing oil, or replacing oil filters. These are the 500-hour service steps. After that period of operation, it will not be unusual to have sediment or water in the fuel. First, check the fuel sediment bowl. Shut off the fuel valve and return valve. Remove the bowl assembly and clean it. Reassemble loosely and let fuel back into the bowl until all the air is displaced. Then tighten the lock nut. If you found water or sediment in the bowl, that means the fuel tank is also contaminated. So drain some fuel until it's running clear. Remember, no smoking. Even though diesel fuel is not as volatile as gasoline, it's still dangerous. Along with the steps you've just completed, also replace the fuel filters. Wipe off both fuel filter bodies and remove both filters with a filter wrench. Discard the old filters. Install a new seal on the second stage filter, oil the gaskets, and hand tighten. Then loosen and again turn by hand clockwise three-fourths of a turn after the filter gasket touches the filter head. After turning the fuel supply back on, loosen these two screws to let air out of the system. Operate the hand primer pump until all the air is out and only fuel comes out. Tighten the screws. Remember to tighten the hand primer pump as the final step. Every couple of months, or at 500 hours, make it a practice to check the ROPS, because that's what will save the operator's life if he rolls over. Make sure all mounting bolts are tight, and inspect for any cracks, bends, or welds. If there is any problem, the ROPS must be replaced. Every 2,000 hours, or once a year, it's time to drain and clean the cooling system. Drain the coolant into suitable containers from both the radiator and the oil cooler. Flush with a cleaning solution and clean water. Then refill the system with a new antifreeze solution to two inches from the top of the radiator opening or to the mark on the overflow container. Run the engine for five minutes to get air out of the system. Then check the level one more time. Certain maintenance is done as required. For example, when the pre-cleaner has collected dust up to the mark on the bowl, remove the bowl and clean it with a cloth. When the air restriction indicator on the dash shows red, it's time to clean the air filter. First, remove the dust cup, then the primary filter. Clean or replace the filter and reset the indicator. Start the tractor, and if the indicator shows red again, then it's time to change the secondary or inner filter. The parking brake and the manual foot brake must each hold the crawler in third gear and at full throttle. If not, follow the brake adjustment procedure in the operator's manual. Good brakes are critical to the safe operation of any machine. Don't attempt a repair you don't understand. Ask questions or get help if you're stumped. That's much better than trying something you aren't trained for. Otherwise, you might cause a machine malfunction, which could cause an accident. To prevent an explosion from a spark, disconnect the negative cable first if you're going to remove the battery. When installing a battery, always connect the negative cable last. There are a few more safety tips to consider. For example, when checking the coolant level when hot, Use a glove or wiping rag and turn a partial turn first to allow any pressure to escape. Then take the cap off. This will prevent a possible serious burn. Jump starting a machine is a two-person job. This is the safe sequence. You sit in the operator's seat and engage the parking brake. Okay. A second person then attaches the positive jumper cable to the starter motor solenoid the negative cable to a good ground on the frame. From the operator's seat, you start the engine. Then, the second person can disconnect the jumper cables negative first. If this procedure is not followed, the machine could move out of control and serious injury could result. 
Never check for hydraulic leaks with your bare hand. High pressure, even from a small leak, will go right through the skin. Check with a piece of paper, cardboard, or wood. Regular scheduled maintenance saves money and also helps keep your machines in safe operating order. As the service mechanic, you are the key man in the life and safety of the machine. You are important to your company, important to yourself, and important to Case.